Hi, I'm Ivan Zoot. You know, the professional beauty industry can get pretty ugly when it comes to the long-term health, wellness, and durability of those of us that deliver services for clients every single day. And carpal tunnel syndrome, one of the challenges we have with the bones and our wrists and the nerves and the joints and the tendons that are moving around in this complicated little area of our body can sometimes sideline a hair cutter short-term or even long-term. I'm a licensed barber, cosmetologist, and a certified personal fitness trainer, and I use that education to help beauty and barber professional, professionals address issues of long-term wellness and durability. What I'd like to share with you today are my five tips for preventing or reducing the tendency to develop carpal tunnel challenges for beauty and barber professionals and service providers. Number one on the list is you gotta warm up. In the car, on the way to work, in the back room before you get to the shop, some stretching exercises. Now, cold muscles are warmed up dynamically. Warm muscles are continued to be kept loose through static stretching, dynamic versus static stretching. So the first one is warm up. Now, don't do any of these exercises now, and of course, don't ever take any type of exercise or fitness advice or recommendations without consulting with a professional, like a doctor. And one of the big rules in my disclaimer is, anything that hurts, don't do it. Anything that hurts, don't do it. I don't know you and your personal circumstances, so my comments are intended to be very generic in nature. Number one, you gotta warm up. Things like wrist circles is a good example of a warm-up exercise for hair cutters. Use the muscle you're gonna use in the way you're gonna use it. One of my favorite scissor warm-ups is quacking like a duck. I call this your sock puppet. What does it look like? It looks like a guy with a scissors in his hand. That's exactly what it's gonna be once I'm warmed up and I go do a bunch of haircuts. So number one, warm it up. A shoulder, shoulder circles. That is an example of a dynamic, meaning in motion, stretching exercise for a beauty and barber professional as an effective warm-up. And then there's stay loose. Once muscles are warm, you wanna keep them loose. That's what we consider what's called static stretching. Static meaning with lack of movement. So as an example, a good example of a static stretch for your wrist, and again, don't do this unless your muscles are warm, pushing your hand back like that. Dropping your hand down and pulling it back. If you have a countertop in front of you, putting your hand up against the edge of the countertop and flexing your wrist and holding six, five, four, three, two, let it go and shake it out like that for intervals, seven seconds and things like that. Those are static stretches. You know, bend over and touch your toes. That's an example of a static stretch for your hamstrings, the big muscles in the back of your legs. That's to keep you warm. 10 o'clock and two o'clock. If you're working the full day, take breaks, 10 and two, and keep yourself warm and keep yourself loose. Back to the note card. Number three on the list, using better tools. Offset scissors as opposed to opposing thumb scissors that move your thumb away from your ring finger. Swivel thumb scissors that create the flexibility and mobility of use that will reduce impingement of your thumb, stress on your wrist, reduce inflammation, and reduce the tendency to develop those type of carpal tunnel challenges. Next on the list, keep your shears sharp. Sharp shears require less force and less effort. They make work easier. Think about it. If you're gonna open and close your scissors 10,000 times today, would it be better if they were well-oiled and clean and sharp so they worked with less uh, friction, less resistance, and smoother operation? Sharp scissors that are properly maintained are a key to wrist health. And last on the list is mix up your tools, you know? I'm known as clipper guy, I do a lot of clipper cutting. And then I put my clipper down and I'm scissor guy. And then I put my scissor down and I'm razor guy. While I make those tool choices based on artistic objectives and creative ideas and the client's desired result, I also mix up my tools because it allows me to use my body parts in different ways for the variety. We call it a repetitive motion injury because you're repeating the same motion over and over and over again. Break up what you do, things like changing the height of your chair. Your back is here, your back is here, your back is here. You're moving so you're not doing the same thing all the time. Mixing it up is a great way to prevent rep repetition that leads to repetitive motion injuries.